Good morning. Good to see you all. It really is. Do you know, sometimes you just look out at people and you think, do you know, it's great to see these people. They're the best people in the world. People of God. It's great. Nudge somebody and say, you're part of the best people in the world. <clears throat> you didn't do it. Did you? <clears throat> Amen. Now point at me and you say, you're fantastic. <laughs> My work here is done. <laughs> Good morning. Um, you know, I, I was, I've been blessed by our online Facebooky uh, little words for the day and all the effort, work and stuff that many of you have done. And so for every person who's contributed, just thank you for the thoughts and the uh, things that you uh, put out there. One of them in particular struck a chord in me uh, because I always think I'm quite childlike. But that's different than being childish. Although my wife, no, we won't go there. <laughs> uh, childlike. Do you know Christianity? I want to write a book, Christianity for Dummies. Because Christianity isn't difficult we as the people of God just make it difficult. We really do. We try to get all kinds of religious stuff in there. Uh, and that's never what God wants. He just wants it to be childlike. So my dear friend here, uh, Mel Melanie, sorry about that, husband, wife to the man who found a great church, but it was full. <laughs> so came here instead. I'd like her to just to share this morning what she shared online quite a few weeks ago now. So if you'd like to go, yeah, that's okay, you don't need that. You just come and share and you'll be fantastic. Do you want to use my uh, eagle? <laughs> okay, good morning, everyone. <coughs> so, um, yes, I'm just going to share what I've done on Facebook and uh, it's... Uh, it's from, from uh, Matthew 18, <coughs> chapter 2 and 3, precisely. He called a little child to him and placed the child among them. And he said, truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of God, of heaven. And then in Matthew 19, 14, Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. And as I was reading those passages, I really thought, okay, it's obviously really important that I become like a child. Because God said the kingdom of heaven, it's for those who are like children. So what does it mean for, for me? What it does it mean for us to be like children? What Jesus really meant about it. So then I thought the best way to, to think about it is to think about my own children. So I would just come up with something that I've found out. So uh, first I want to talk about Cassidy. My little Cassidy, she loved talking. She talked all the time. She got all of these questions. It's just amazing. I don't know where all that comes from, but she got a lot to say. And the, the other day as we were walking, um, she keep asking more questions. And I tried to answer. And at some point I said, you know what? I think I'm not, I don't really know the answer to that question. And she looked at me and said, no, you do know it because you, mommy, you know everything. So it's like for her, there's no possibility, I, I don't know. I will be able to answer a question. So she really thought I do know everything. And then I thought about my son, Matthew, when he was a little boy. Uh, I used to live at my dad. And he thought that his granddad could do everything. If he broke a toy, he thought, oh, it's fine, I will go and see granddad because he can repair it. If there was something to, that needed to be done in the garden, in the house, there was nothing that was impossible from his point of view that my dad couldn't do it. And then I remember a little thing that's happened when uh, Sean and Cassidy was little. And it was about some people asking about how old their dad was. And they say, huh, he's 21. Yeah, because kids have told them when they ask, how old you are? I say, I'm 21. So the girls was really quick to answer to anybody that they that was 21 because they just trust and they believe that what it was. 
And then I start talking about, you know, all of them in general, even in my childhood when I was a little girl. And I thought about, you know, the fact that we are not worrying as little children. We don't worry about what we're going to eat. We're not worried about, ah, oh, am I going to have some clothes when I go to school? As, is my PE kit will be in my bag when I need it? They, they do not worry about absolutely anything. They don't start to think, I've never had a child coming, oh, are we going to pay for the house this month? How are the electricity going to pay? They don't have those kind of things. Even about going and healing, you know, just like we heard this morning, when Cassidy was asked to go and pray, she didn't start thinking, oh, maybe, you know, it will not be working. You know, what if it doesn't happen? You know, they just go because yep. they have faith. They go and they pray for people and they are expecting. So, and the, the last thing I talked about children, it's about when the little children, they hurt themselves, the first thing they come in to do, they come and run into me. They want me to comfort, it, comfort them. They want me to be kissing them better. Yeah. If they had a bad day at school, they will come and share with me because they know I can help them. They know I will listen to them and I will be there for them. And then that's make me realize that is the kind of thing that God wants from us. That is the thing he wants us to be, to know that he knows everything and even better than me because I I'm, I don't know about everything, but he knows everything. He can do everything. Nothing is impossible for him. And he wants us to believe and trust in him and have a faith like those li little children. They do not question. They, don't, they, is not, they are not wondering how the thing will happen. They just know things will happen. And God is a provider. And God keeps his promise. And there's nothing for him that... It's impossible, so we just need to really trust and believe in him. And another thing I find really important, you know, when you get hurt, what will happen? When you have challenge in our life, when things get really difficult, when we cannot see an answer, I think first and always we need to go running to God because that's what we do as a child. We go to our parent. We don't go to see the first thing, a stranger. We don't go anywhere. We don't try to find answer on the internet. We go to our parent and God wants us to run to him all of the time because he got everything for us, the answer for everything. Yeah. And he's the great one who will comfort yeah. us and be there for us. So let us all of those little things. And when we look at children, let us just be inspired, inspired to be like them because that's what pleases God. And the kingdom of heaven, it's a place of joy, peace and happiness and when you look at little children you can see they've got that kind of joy and happiness in them and that's what Jesus won for us so let us just remind that and always put God above everything else Amen yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, that was great I really enjoyed that again You've heard a lot of stuff already this morning, so I'm going to be very, very brief now. Yeah! And then you can go get some lunch. Yeah! Um, the kingdom of God is righteousness and it's peace and it's joy in the Holy Spirit. Not just righteousness, our own righteousness, our own peace and our own joy, but it's righteousness and it's peace and it's joy in the Holy Spirit. In the Holy Spirit. As when young Christians, this was prompted by you, when young Christians come and start talking about uh, wanting to get into reading the Bible, <clears throat> my <clears throat> recommendation to them is normally read the book of Luke, and then when you've read the book of Luke, read the book of Acts, because those two are connected. They're sort of part one and part two of the same story. You'll read all about Jesus, and then you'll read about what happened by people who believed in Jesus. The book of Acts, of course, it, it, it takes us from the ascension of Jesus, uh, from his, uh, uh, and then into the coming of the Spirit in chapter two, and then the birth of the church, and and right on through, I think, to chapter 28, when we find Paul, and he's in prison. At the end of the book, it's a great, great story 
uh, lasting, I think, about 40 years. It's packed full of wonderful stories of people, of healings, of miracles, of signs and wonders, people being born again, the church growing and expanding, uh, about God's supernatural provision. All these things are contained in this glorious book of Acts. That you can't read it without going, wow. In fact, many people think, oh, wouldn't it be wonderful to go back to those days? Oh, it must have been great in those days. Well, you know, we can read the book of Acts uh, with rose-tinted glasses, as it were, because if you went back to those days, you might find out that things weren't always quite as perfect as they seem when you read the book of Acts. It's when you start reading the letters, you find out of all the problems many of those churches have. In fact, if somebody was to write, I think David started once, to write the history of this church... Um, over and the same kind of period of time, 40 years. If you were to write the history of this church, uh, probably when you wrote it, you would talk about all the triumphs and, and all the victories. You'd talk about uh, the miracles that we've seen, the healings, the salvations, uh, people coming to cry, all the wonderful things that we've experienced. I'm waiting for the people of the church to say amen to that, by the way. <clears throat> all the wonderful things that we've seen. Thank you so much. <laughs> Can you just edit that prompt before out? <laughs> we, we, and so you would read it maybe a little bit with rose colored glasses, rose tinted glasses. You would not necessarily know of all the problems and the difficulties, the heartbreaks, the things that we've overcome on our journey. But nevertheless, in all of it, the Holy Spirit is the same Holy Spirit now that he was 2,000 years ago and is doing exactly the same kind of stuff that he did back then. Isn't that right? You see, when I read this book, it says here uh, on the top of my book, it says it's called The Acts of the Apostles. Now, now that label, that title to the book of Acts was not written by Luke who wrote the who wrote that book. He didn't write on the beginning the Acts of the Apostles. Some bloke called Irenaeus did that about 300 years later. It was just, here's a story. And, and actually, as I read this, I, w I would never have given it that title. Because it's not just the Acts of the Apostles that's recorded in the book, but the Acts of so many people who were not Apostles. It was the Acts of people like Philip and Priscilla and Aquila and Stephen and Ananias and, and a multitude of other gifted, anointed men and women of God. That's who this book was written about. It was written about people. Yes, Jeff. So I don't think it's just the Acts of the Apostles, but it's the Acts of the body of Christ. It's not just about the Acts of those special leaders, but it's about the acts of people, the acts of the people of God, the acts of believers, the acts of those who've been filled with the Spirit, the acts of those who would step out in faith, the acts of those who would be obedient to what Jesus said and would dare to believe that what Jesus said was true, that these signs would follow them that believe. Hello. These signs would follow them that believe. I wonder if you believe that as you follow Jesus, signs and wonders will follow you. See, if you're chasing after signs and wonders, if you're chasing after those things, you're just going to chase after something you'll never catch. You should desire those things, but my pursuit is of God. And if I'm pursuing God, these five signs will follow me. See, if I'm passionate for God and to give myself to God, these signs will follow me. Anybody want signs and wonders to follow them? Is there a believer in the house this morning who doesn't want signs and wonders to follow them? Of course we do. We all have that longing inside. Oh, God, I'd just love to do that. We're going to pray for you shortly. If you'd like that to happen in your life. Early warning, coming up shortly. If there's a church near you, we are going to pray for you that that will happen. Some have suggested that the book should be called The Acts of the Holy Spirit, not The Acts of the Apostles. Well, the truth is that without people taking action, nothing would have happened. 
See, it's the acts of the people because it's the people that acted. It was the acts of the people who acted that caused things to happen. <laughs> You're not sounding convinced right now. But it's true. This amazing book of Acts was accomplished by a partnership between the Holy Spirit and the people of God. That's what happened. A partnership that God working with them. No, they're working on their own. But they're not God just moving on his own, but God working with them. Any thems in here this morning? I'm looking at you lot and go, there them are. There them are. There them are. There, them are. there you are. You're with them this morning. A candidate for the Spirit of God to work through you, to do amazing things. That your life should not be lived in the ordinary, but the extraordinary. That's what God wants for you. Nudge someone and says, God wants you to be extraordinary. Acts chapter, the book of Acts does not finish in chapter 28. Sorry, I'm going to start that again. Acts does not finish at chapter 28. That book in the Bible might close at 28, but I want you to know in the records of heaven right now, those records are continuing to be written. Right now, God is still recording the acts of the people of God. Your acts, my acts, our acts. Oh, God, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder right now what they're writing about me. I hope they're writing something great about me. You know, I do really, you know, I try to be humble, but really I want, to be honest, Father, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I want great things. I want people to say, I want the devil to say, he can't come here. I mean, I, I want to disturb Make a difference. I don't want to pass through life unnoticed. Hello? I wonder what they're going to write about me. I wonder what they're going to say about me. I wonder what they're going to say about us. The community church in Southport. You know, I read the stories about the church at Ephesus and the church at Corinth and the church at um, somewhere else. <laughs> Thessalonica, anywhere you like. But I read on it, wow. The church at Thessalonica was a great church. Paul loved the church at Thessalonica. He had some great things to say about it. I just want God to say great things about this church. I want him to open the books of heaven and go, man, the community church in Southport, they were a great church. I wonder what they say about me. I wonder what they say about us. I wonder what they say about you. See, I believe if you're a child of God and the Spirit is in you, there is something in you desirous to see God move in wonderful ways. The Spirit of God, you see, constantly wants to move. That's the nature of the Holy Spirit. He constantly wants to move. Every description of the Holy Spirit in the Bible describes him in the... <coughs> about one who wants to move. That's why he, he's referred to, uh, he's a fire that's burning. He's a river that's flowing. He's a dove that's descending. He's a wind that's blowing. He's a rain that's falling. He's springs of life bubbling up within us. Every description of the Spirit of God is that which is moving, that which is doing something. He's never still. He's never still. He's moving. He's in you now. And he wants to move. The Holy Spirit is in you. But you know what? He wants to get out of you. Jesus said, out of your innermost beings will. Anybody read the Bible in this room besides me? Out of your innermost beings will flow rivers of living water. You see, he doesn't want those rivers of living water to be... You know, if you're taking it and you're not giving out, you get constipated. Are you allowed to say constipated in the church? That's okay. But that's the nature. You know, you, the waters become stagnant within you. God wants rivers of living water to flow out of you. He's in you, but he wants to get out of you. He, but, but, but he's waiting for you to move. He's waiting for you to do something. In Genesis chapter 1, he said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We know that bit. Um, 
Yeah. Got a Bible? Who's got a Bible? What's the next bit? I can't remember. Yeah. And the Spirit. I'll see what. Thank you. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and. <laughs> the earth was without form and void and darkness. The, the Hebrew, by the way, there, are you going to be impressed? It's Tahu Wabahu. It was empty, formless, nothing. That was like you, by the way, before you came to Christ. Nothing. Empty, formless, shapeless. That's what the Bible says, by the way, not what I'm saying. The Bible says that. That's what you were like. But God spoke into your life. And the Spirit of God came in you when you were born again. But the, the earth was formless. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the deep, it says. The Spirit of God was hovering. He was hovering in the creation of, of the heavens and the earth. All of the God had the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, were all involved all involved in the creation. The Father being the author of creation, the Son being the architect of creation, and the Holy Spirit being the administrator, as it were, of, of creation, uh, shaping and moving and, and creating things. But the Spirit of God, it says, was hovering. He's hovering. He was waiting. He was hovering over the face of the... He's hovering. We used to have a friend called Hoax Vedder, a Dutch guy who used to come to the church. Remember Hoax Vedder? How many people remember Hoax Vedder? He used to come to the church. Great D Dutch brother out there planting churches in Eastern Europe. Now, he always used to say, and the Spirit of God was hoovering over the face of the earth. Not quite the same picture when you think of the hoover. But the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the deep. He was waiting, he was waiting. What's the Spirit of God waiting for, the Spirit of God was waiting for a word upon which he could take action. And then suddenly the word came, let there be light. And the Spirit of God moves and everything changes. The Spirit of God is waiting to move in your life. He's waiting to move in your life. Because that's how the Spirit of God works. There's a word, and the Spirit comes to help us accomplish that word. That's what the Spirit does. That's how the Spirit operates in our lives. He is released in us to work when we respond to the word of God spoken to us. In your life, in my life, in this church, the Spirit is hovering over us. Can, can I just... Let you get that picture in your head, Christian, this morning. The Spirit of God is constantly with you, hovering, waiting for you to do something that he can come and join in with and do something miraculous in your situation. Yeah, I, I just want to say right now, thank you to every one of the students who are doing that and agreeing. Amen? Amen, Edge Hill? Do you know that? He's hovering over Edge Hill. He's ev hovering over every born-again believer in that university. He's hovering over that place, waiting for you to take an action that he can say, I can work with you. And he can come and do something miraculous. You can have a great Christian union, Chris, and um, Sophie, thank you, uh, and Hedgel are doing a great job. But you know, this year, because they're Holy Ghost people, it can be a whole new dimension of what God can accomplish. It can set that college on fire. You know what? Just by taking an action, taking an action, the spirit hovers waiting to see something moving. You've seen the bird of prey in the sky, that hawk or whatever, and it just seems to hover in the sky. It's not going forward, back. It's just hovering in the sky and it's looking down and it's watching and it's waiting. What's he watching for? He's watching for a movement upon which he can swoop down. And the Spirit of God is like that. He's watching for you to do something upon which he can swoop down, join you in it for you to encounter God's miraculous power. The eyes of the Lord search 
the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. That's what the word of God says. The eyes of the Lord are looking. The spirit is hovering. The eyes of the Lord are looking. He's watching. Is anybody doing anything? Is anybody doing anything? Is anybody going to say something? Is anybody going to speak? Is anybody going to do something? There's one. The Lord swoops down. He's with you. To empower you. To empower you. Well, I'm just waiting for the Lord to prompt me to move and to do something. And then I'll, I'll, I'll go and join the Lord in doing it. It doesn't work that way, folks. <laughs> we do not need the Spirit of God to initiate that which God has already told us in his word to do. Can you say that again? We do not wait for to see the Spirit doing something what God's already told us to do. We're not, if God says go out in the world and preach the gospel, go and preach the gospel. You don't need another word. Get on with it. If the, if the, if the word of God has told me to go and testify to, to the loveliness of Jesus, I don't need to hear a word from God. I'm already knowing that that's what God wants me to do. If I, if I, if I know that God said when you meet somebody who's sick, offer to pray for them, I do not need a word from God to ask me to go and pray for them. The Spirit of God is hovering. He's waiting for me to take an action that he can join in with. Will somebody say amen? That's what God wants. He just wants us to do something. I think the motto of the church should be the same as the motto of Nike shoes. Just do it. Just do it. The Word of God says that you are, you are more than, we are more than conquerors. The Greek word there is you are hupakaneo, hupanikeo. And the word, little word nike is in the middle of that. Do you see that? Hupa, nikeo. Hupa means super duper. That's what it means in the Greek. Honestly, trust me, I'm a pastor. That's what it means. And who, you are more than hupa, super duper. Nike, conqueror, victorious. That's what Nike means, by the way. That little flash on your shoe means you're victorious. Hooper Nike, oh, you're more than conquerors. The Spirit of God is just waiting for you to take a step and to do something. Don't just sit there, do something. I don't need a word of God to tell me to witness, to bless, to pray, to reach the lost. I don't need a word of God. I've already got the word of God that's told me to do that. I don't need a new word of God from that. I'm just going to be obedient to that word. And as I'm obedient to that word, I'm going to believe that the Holy Ghost is going to come and help me to be magnificent in doing that. Is that okay? Good. I've got... What time do I have to finish, Dave? Tuesday? <laughs> oh, past Tuesday. Okay. So often we are waiting for the Spirit to move so that we can join in when He is waiting for us to do something He can join in with. Yeah? He's hovering over you. He's watching. He's waiting. When you're with that friend, that work colleague, the Spirit of God is hovering over you. That one who doesn't know Jesus, He's hovering over you. That neighbor, that next door neighbor, and he's hovering over you and he's waiting for you to speak, to say something, testify, put a word in. Don't just think a word, it's just be encouraging to them, to be kind. He's waiting. An act of kindness, he's waiting. Do something. Don't wait for the Spirit to say, oh, you need to do that. The Spirit of God doesn't do that. You act, he joins in. A word of testimony, a word of encouragement, a prophetic word, a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom. He's waiting for you to speak. When you're with someone who's sick, the Spirit of God is with you. He's hovering over you. He's waiting. He's waiting. You don't need to be nudged to say, oh, well, what, it'd be nice if you prayed for that people. God's already told you to pray. Dummy. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to everybody else. He's already told you what to do. Just, in the words of Nike, just do it. He can anoint you. Do something that he can anoint. You don't have to pray long prayers for a sick person. In fact, don't. Go 
don't pray long prayers for sick people. Just speak health into their bodies. I find if I pray long prayers, the sickness gets bigger and God gets smaller. Do you know what I mean? Look at me and say, yes, Jeff, or no, Jeff, or something. Just pray, Father, pray health and wholeness into this body in the name of Jesus. I was so blessed by your kids. Praying for Julia last week. I was so blessed by that testimony this week. I'm so blessed. You know why? Because with childlike faith, they dared to believe God. Do you know what, folks? We should be like little children. And with childlike faith, with childlike faith, and when we come together on a Sunday morning, I was going to spend half an hour or more on this. That's going to be for another time. But when we come together on a Sunday morning, do you know we're not coming to a concert? We're not coming to a show. We're not coming to watch Dave, Dave Gregg and the backing group. What's the backing group? Give me a suggestion for the backing group. The what? Dave Gregg and the Dodgers. <laughs> <laughs> we're not waiting for Dave to put on a show you know for various people you know for, for, for me to get up and you can mark me out of ten out of, out of seven this isn't strictly come dancing this is the body of Christ the family of God coming together and we come together you know we don't come together in this place so that the, so that the lost might be found that's not our purpose for being here this morning our purpose for being here is for the family of God to gather together, to love God, to worship God, to, to equip us and to enable us and to strengthen us by word and song and all the various manifestations of the Spirit to equip us that we can go out there and win the lost. We can't all sit in here waiting for somebody who's lost to come in. Goodness me. No, if unsaved people come in, those who don't know Jesus come in, fantastic. By your dynamism, by your passion, by your zeal, by your enthusiasm, we can make them think, wow, this is fantastic. I was saying to my friend Glenn this morning, Glenn's a great guy to have in a meeting. Glenn's a great guy to, whatever meeting I go to, I want Glenn to be there. You know why? Because Glenn is responsive, He's vocal. He looks like he's listening. He doesn't often nod off. He's great in a meeting. Do you know in a meeting there is a temperature, a, a spiritual temperature in a meeting? Every meeting, it just is. And every person who comes in either raises or lowers that temperature. Hello? If you had 50 raving Pentecostal charismatics coming here, I want you to know the spiritual temperature would rise. Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> if you had, oh, no, I can't say any, you know, but if you saw, got a lot of nominal Christians come in here and sit down, anti-charismatic, I want you to know the temperature of the meeting would diminish. When you walk into any place Holy Ghost people, listen to me. Let me see your eyeballs. When you walk into a room, you will either raise or lower the spiritual temperature. I want to be somebody who raises the temperature. I want to be somebody who makes a difference. I'm going to stop. I hope you caught my heart. It was a bit sort of all over the place. Please prepare yourself when you come to the house of God. Please prepare yourself and that you're saying, God, I'm going to meet with the family of God. I'm going to meet with the people of God. I want to meet with my brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm not attending a show. I'm going to go and I'm going to participate. I'm going to raise the temperature spiritually of that thing. God, have you got something you'd like me to say? Have you got a prophetic word that you'd like me to bring? Have you got a word of testimony of what's happened to me this week that I can encourage people with? Have you got something that I can contribute into that gathering? That's how we should come to this place. 
You should never come to this place as it were empty hand. God wants you to believe that when you step out, he's going to help you. I was with Kerry some time ago. And um, we were talking about meetings and, and how sometimes in a meeting something needs to happen. Do you, do you understand what I mean? Both of you have been around a long time. You'll understand what I mean. And, and Kerry says, well, sometimes, you know, you've just got to do something to make things happen. You've got to move. He says, what I often do, well, I'll pick somebody from the congregation and say, I just want you to come forward. And as they come forward, he says, I know that between them standing up and getting to the front, I have to have a prophetic word for them. And I thought, man, that's a bit... Um, but it's not. He's stepping out believing. Because you know God's got a prophetic word for every person in this room. God wants to say something to you. Doesn't he? He wants to speak to you. So I quit. And just say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for a great bunch of people. Great church. Great family of God. I want to thank you, Lord, that we come together, not just as an audience, but as a family of people who want to obey you and to, to move in sign and wonder in the miraculous. Lord, our hearts are for you, and as we pursue you, we understand that these signs will follow because we believe. Now, we're just taking you at your word, Lord God. We're believing that what you say is true. Thank you, God. We believe what you say is true. So I pray, Lord, right now in Jesus' name for every person in this room that the Spirit of God in them would rise up even now. The Spirit who is hovering, who's waiting, is waiting for people to take a step of faith, to move 